Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy, and today I'm here to do another author illustrator deep dive for the Picture This Readathon. And we are going to be exploring Jeannie Baker, who does absolutely incredible work. So Jeannie Baker is very well known here. She's been publishing books in Australia since before 1980, and she illustrates her books using relief collage. So she uses lots of found objects to create beautiful collages that tell a story. Many of her books feature issues that center environmentalism and how we maintain our environment and how we don't lose sight of the fact that our environment is really important to us, but that's not the only work that she does. Her work is incredibly beautiful and I'm going to be talking about books from 1980 until current day. There are a couple of books that I wasn't able to get a hold of. They're much older titles and they just weren't available, but yeah, we've got a few things to go through. So yeah, we're going to jump straight into it. So the first book I'm going to talk about is Millicent. This was published in 1980 and this is the story of a an old woman who walks through the park and she is feeding the pigeons and talking to them. They're her friends. It's a really gorgeous story and I think Jeannie Baker wrote a note at the start of the book talking about how she would sit in her local park and she would just people watch and she'd think about these stories for all of these people. So as you can tell this is a form of collage that has been photographed and put together to tell a story. They're really visually interesting to look at because there's lots and lots of detail in each picture. This one has very simple text mostly told through the speech bubbles or thought bubbles of Millicent as she's moving through the park and it's just a really lovely little story. Then in 1982 she published One Hungry Spider. This is a counting book and it's a very unique counting book in that it is looking at an orb spider making a web and its sort of daily life using numbers. So it's One Hungry Spider and then you see the web being built. Five dragonflies flew up and so on and so forth. Like I really like looking really closely at her pictures to see sort of what elements she has used. Like you can tell with the web, it's some kind of string, but it's really, really clever. In 1984, Home in the Sky came out and this is the story of homing pigeons. Mike has a whole stack of pigeons that he's raising in the city and he releases them one day and they always come home. But then one day one of the pigeons flies away and Mike isn't sure if he's going to see the pigeon again. Again, lots of really gorgeous detail. The other thing that I like is that, you know, some pages don't have heaps of background detail. They're just very plain, so they center the image. And then others, you have lots going on. Probably one of her most well-known books is Where the Forest Meets the Sea, and this came out in 1988. This is one of the very first Jenny Baker books that I ever read. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It is set in... It is set in a rainforest in Northern Queensland in Australia. And it is the story of a boy and his father who have gone to a beach, they're fishing there, and the boy goes off exploring this ancient rainforest and imagining all of the things that have come before him. And at the very end of the book, we get to a scene where the boy and his father are leaving and saying, you know, they'll come back one day. And the question is there, but will it still be the same as it was now? And it looks at development of land. So it's, it is one of the most beautiful books. And I, I genuinely believe that this one has stood the, the test of time. I mean, just look at this tree. And there are lots of hidden details in their, in her pictures as well. So it's like you go hunting for things. And so this is what I was talking about. You know, this is them talking about their day and, you know, saying that they'll, they have to leave, but they'll come back one day. And then you have the hint that this will be a land that is developed and maybe that this beautiful ancient place won't exist in the same way anymore. In 1991 she released Window which is a wordless picture book. There are a few little words and hints throughout the pages to help tell the story but this is how every year changes occur and they're just little changes that ultimately lead up to big changes as we look outside our window. So we start with the view from the window on the day that a baby comes home from being born. And every year we get little clues as to how much time has passed. So this is two years later and the view has changed a little bit. We get hints that the person this window belongs to is Sam. And again, the view has changed all the way through as Sam grows up. And it's really simple. I've actually used this in the classroom many times. It's great for inference. It's great for being able to verbally tell a story because there's no words here. 
and it's absolutely stunning. And Jeannie Baker has done a few books in this same style, which I'll talk about as we go on. In 1995, she released The Story of Rosie Dock. This is about the introduction of non-native plants to the Australian landscape. So it's about European settlers coming to the country and the impact that that has had on the changing landscape. So people have come and settled the land and they've started planting non-native plants, which don't necessarily do so well in the you know, the dry desert climate. But what happens in the desert is that eventually, even though it's dry and there's not a lot of rain, when it does rain, it rains quite significantly. It causes floods and it picks up all of those plants and transports them across the desert. So even though it doesn't look like you're having an impact, everything's still very dry and arid. These non-native plants have spread because of the rains and that has an impact on all of our environment. So there's also the introduction of rabbits, which has been horrific for um, Australia. The one thing I haven't mentioned is that lots of Jeannie Baker's books also include a note from Jeannie Baker about the inspiration behind the story. So in this one, it's the case of the introduction of rosy dock plants to Australia and how that has impacted the flora and fauna of the environment. Then we come to The Hidden Forest, which is probably another really well-known Jeannie Baker book. This was published in 2000, and this is exploring the underwater kelp sea forests in Australian coastal waters. So Ben is looking for his lost fish trap, but he is quite afraid of the kelp forests underneath, and he enlists the help of a friend to go down and dive for this fish trap, and she convinces him to come with her. And what he discovers is an underwater world he never really truly understood. And it causes him to rethink unsustainable fishing. The texture in this one is really incredible because obviously Jeannie Baker is playing with water. So I think she used resin for the water effect so that it has that really shiny look to it. I love the kelp forest. And I know, I think what she said is for some of those, she used translucent polymer clay and then other elements she was using natural materials. Like it's, it's just beautiful. All right, then in 2024, she released Belonging, although overseas, I think it might be, have been released as Home. So these are the, the same book, just different covers and different titles. And Home is in the same style as Window. It is looking outside someone's window at the small changes that happen over time. And in this story, we are following the life of Tracy and her family. And where Window was the gradual introduction of the city and building up the land outside the window. This one is more about nature reclaiming parts of the city. So they're really great ones to read side by side and to talk about the differences in the story and basically how they're inverse stories, but it is just gorgeous and really looks at how, you know, these days we are trying to make sure that we do have elements of nature in our big built up areas because it makes us feel more connected to our two places. Then in 2010, Jeannie Baker released one of the most interesting picture books, I think that is out there at the moment. And that is Mirror. And this is a picture book that is actually two stories told at the same time. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open it effectively this way, but it actually opens out at the same time and you're supposed to read both stories at exactly the same time. So like this. This is a wordless picture book and it is the story of two boys and two families, one living in Australia and one living in Morocco. And it looks at their lives, their families' lives, how things are different on a daily basis, but also what are the similarities. And it is told in both English and Arabic. And I cannot imagine how long it took to put all of these collages together. They are just beautiful. So even the front and the back replicate each other. It's still one of the most unique picture books I've ever seen. In 2016, she released Circle, and this looks at the migratory patterns of birds, but also the fragility of our environment and the animals that live in our environment. It follows a group of goodwits as they migrate across the globe to their different stopping grounds throughout the year. And we ex get to explore lots of different places around the world. I did really like at the back of this one that there is quite a lengthy author's note that talks about it, as well as the Goodwit migration map. And then it also has other animals that migrate that you can find in this book. So it's an opportunity to go back and see if you can find all of them. So again, this is a really clever one. This is a little bit longer than some of her other work as well. And then her most recent book, which came out last year in 2023, is Desert Jungle. And this is just stunning. It is set in the Sonoran Desert and it is 
so interesting. Like I didn't know anything about this. It is about a young boy who is staying with his grandfather in a small, tiny village. He's got his tablet and he doesn't really want to go exploring, but then one night an animal comes and takes the bag that he's left outside that has food in it, plus his tablet, and so his sans tablet. Then that encourages him to go out to explore the local environment and the forest. And he, you know, he gets lost the first day and he doesn't understand it. And slowly his grandfather begins teaching him about the local environment and he becomes fascinated by the wildlife and the flora there and then he gets caught out in a storm one night and has a new experience and then when he eventually returns home he has a new appreciation for an environment he didn't really know much about. This one has quite a bit of information about the setting and where it takes place and there's also an author's note as well on top of the information that we get and Jeannie Baker actually said that she was inspired to write this book because she'd actually been out to visit there and had met some of the locals and they talked about how many of the younger generation don't actually know or understand much about their local environment anymore and that that information is being lost with newer generations and so she wanted to capture some of that and share it in a book which I think is incredible. And then the last book that I'm going to share is actually not a picture storybook it is Playing with Collage which is a book that Jenny Baker has put together all about how she creates and plays with natural elements to create her collages. And I thought it would be really good to include at the end of this video because obviously this is her medium. In it, she goes through a lot of her basic, the basic things she uses, different mediums, how you can play with materials. And then she creates various little collages using these found materials. And it's very much an invitation for people to find some of these things that you might have lying around the house or you might be able to collect if you're out on walks in a local bushland or parkland or at the beach. And then how you can create different abstract collages with them. So this isn't so much about how she creates specifically her artwork, but how she plays with things to come up with different textures and different looks. And it's a really, really lovely book for anyone who is looking at getting started with collage. So I thought I would include that in here. So those are all our Jeannie Baker books. In the comments, I'd love to know if you have read Jeannie Baker and if you have a favorite of her books, or if you are planning on picking up some of them after this video. I will leave links to where you can find out more information about all of these books down below. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a leaf emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.